Today's episode of The Bitcoin Show is brought to you by Mt. Gox, mtgox.com, and thankyoeconomybook.com, and memorydealers.com. Hey everybody and welcome to the Bitcoin Show. We are back and uh, today is Saturday. What is today? Saturday, November 26th. I don't even know. It's the Saturday after Black Friday after Thanksgiving. Hope everybody had a nice Thanksgiving and you're still enjoying your holidays. We're broadcasting live again and uh, as you can see right here in my lower third, you can send feedback now. Uh, when we're broadcasting live, you can actually send this uh, live during the show or afterwards, 24-7, anytime you want. Uh, whatever you send, we'll comment on in the next episode. But if we're broadcasting live and you happen to be watching live on onlyonetv.com slash live, then you can actually send an email or an SMS text message to me right now, and I'll get it right here. So uh, we can actually ask, uh, you can you know, pitch in a question, and we can ask our guest or comment or suggestion or correction or whatever, things like that. Um, and for those of you listening in audio, it's, the email address is feedback at onlyonetv.com. And the SMS text messaging number from anywhere in the world is plus one, of course. It's the USA number, 646-580-0099. So I'll say that once more. Text message to 646-580-0099 and send us a message live during the show or any time in between shows and we'll comment on it on the next episode. Uh, or email feedback at onlyonetv.com. So today we've got a, uh, an interesting topic. Um, it's one of those uh, intriguing uh, aspects of Bitcoin um, that exists, so we're going to report on it. We've got um, a, a guest with us. His name is Coin Jedi, as is obviously his nickname handle, Coin Jedi. And Hi. Uh, he's the founder of Bets of Bitcoin. Welcome, Mr. Jedi or Coin? Should I call you? It doesn't matter. Coin Jedi. <laughs> Hi. Hi okay, Bruce. how you doing? Good, how are you? Good. He's, on, he's on, via Skype, but we're not using video for obvious reasons. We want to uh, keep it a little bit on the down low. So, uh, you know, that's one of the advantages of Bitcoin is that it can be as anonymous as you want it to be. Now, tell us about Bets of Bitcoin. By the way, it's, it's a website. It's Bets, like B-E-T-S, of bitco.in, right? Yes. So okay. It's just Bets of Bitcoin, and there's a dot between it. Uh, co and in with the dot it's co it's uh, bets of bitco dot in so it spells bitcoin got it okay so yeah. one of those web 2.0 whatever names um, <laughs> so w first of all how long has has bets of bitcoin been around so um, since August since August just yes. August of this last year oh so uh, yeah okay September so October it's, it's only three it months has been just a couple of months a couple of months okay. So, and how did you, um, what is it? Tell us what it's about. So, it's a prediction website where mm -hmm. you can make predictions of uh, real world events. And oh, we're, we're losing your audio. Can you say that again? And kill my video to him so that we can hear him. We're losing uh, your audio, so he's going to try and... Uh, coins on your oh you're all choppy hold on one second he's going to stop sending video to you so that we can increase our bandwidth a little bit oh, yeah. did you do that uh -oh. okay all right now you. now we can hear you go ahead and say that again uh so it's a prediction website where you can uh predict any future events um, it can be anything about uh, politics or technology bitcoin science so people put statements and put uh, take a side on those statements uh, and put bitcoins as a bet and people bet against each other they bet each other okay so this is obviously obviously gambling and it's not legal everywhere so we have to make that clear um, yes you're able but the basic idea um, why don't you flip over here and show them what it looks like bits of Bitcoin here it is the basic idea is uh, bet on existing statements earlier bets win more Submit new statements. Submitters earn a commission, and um, 
And here's an example. These are earliest deadline. Let me switch over here to highest bets. So <laughs> here's some examples of some bets. The Butterfly, Butterfly Labs Bitforce SHA 256 single will not ship before January 3rd, 2012. And they're betting 100 Bitcoin, 100.10 Bitcoins that it will and 103.11 that it won't. Is that what that means? Uh, it's the other way around because the statement is a negative one. So green oh. bubbles means uh, you agree with the statement and oh. statement says it will not ship. Mm -hmm. And then the red means that you do not agree with the statement, however yes. it's phrased. Okay. And then the deadline is it's a month out. Okay. Now, yes. What, okay, so, so anybody can enter any statement that you want. You can, you can say that it's going to rain on Friday. You can say anything you want. Yeah, so somebody tried weather as well, right? <laughs> okay, and uh, you can make any statement you want, and then anybody can bet uh, for or against it. So when, yes. when this says 100.10 and 103.11 Bitcoin, does that mean that that's what it will cost me to make that bet? No, you can bet any amount, and it's just a pool. So people start betting on both sides, so it just piles up into the pool, and that's the amount you see in the pool. Um, so you can just bet 0.1, and on average you'll get, at this point, if it ends like this, you get twice um, if you win. Twice. But uh, the caveat is uh, we put a twist in the betting, so... Mm -hmm. Earlier bets win more, so uh, it helps to build up the pool. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it helps to. Be, okay, so that's the pool. I'm still, but obviously, what you win is like a ratio of what you bet, right? Yes, yes. So what happens is uh, on the help page, you can see that there is uh, there's a scheme of how we distribute the winning bets. So mm -hmm. let's say one side. Uh, loses and okay. we pick those and 45% of it is distributed uh, just proportional to what you bet and the other 45% is distributed uh, with time weighted proportionally mm -hmm. so earlier bets gets more from that second share mm -hmm. and 5% of the losing bets goes to the uh, person who initiated the statement and we take another 5% uh, from the losing bets. So we take only from the losing bets. So in total, we get less than 2%. Mm. That's, what, that's your rake, what you take off the top. Yes. Okay. Now, um, okay, so let's talk about the, <laughs> the legality. Obviously, this is legal in certain countries and, legal and, and illegal in other countries and jurisdictions. I guess, uh, is that true? Is that a true statement? Um, like, I guess so, but there is currently no court order in any Bitcoin business, so I'm not sure actually, 100%. Oh, we're not like, sure. if, if they, because it's not, it, they may not consider it as uh, real money or. Mm, um, right. Because if you're just, if you're betting it, a, a, a cryptocurrency that's a, a virtual commodity, then it may not even be considered money. Yeah, so. so it, it, it may depend on the country. Right. Um, there's certain complications. <laughs> One of those areas is uncharted territory, so there's yes. no case uh, to determine it. Obviously, there are jurisdictions where outright gambling for money is legal and other places where it's not, but this is all Bitcoin, so yes. um, it's yet to be determined how they're going to view that. Huh? So, yes. All right. Now... And it's only been operating for uh, a couple months. Yes. And you've got Barack Obama will be reelected 11 months and two weeks. Uh, I'm just going to read through these statements. These are interesting. Um, and by the way, what is Butterfly Labs Bitforce SHA-256 single? What is that? Is that a new card? So it's, it's a new uh, advertised um, Bitcoin mining hardware. So a small company um, claimed that they have a, a very powerful, very... L uh, low power um, Bitcoin mining hardware. Mm -hmm. um, so they announced it and the forums just got crazy. Some people believed that, some people didn't. So a person uh. created this bet 
and mm -hmm. people start taking sides. Right. Um, yes. So y yesterday they sent some photos uh, of the product. So it seems that it they claim that it might be shipped actually. And then, uh, oh. but we'll see. We'll and see. This, okay. So there's a theory. And there may be some insider information. The people from Butterfly Labs might be on here too. But <laughs> so they, they also claim that on the forums that they will not bet on their own success in any way. But oh. we don't know. We, we, we cannot track it, obviously. Then again, because it's Bitcoin, right? So we, yes. don't, we, can't, we can't hold them to that. But um, interesting. So, and this bet was just placed like a couple seconds before we started taping, right? Because <laughs> you told me a new high bet. Is this the highest seconds. bet ever or no? This is the highest bet ever right now. Uh, but the thing is, a couple of seconds we started, it was 100 to 53, and all of a sudden somebody uh, put 50 bitcoins more in one side. So it's now 100 to 103. Wow. Uh, we'll see what happens. There's still one month to go, and as long as there is mm -hmm. no evidence of shipping, so someone will continue this bet, and if we see any evidence that somebody received the product and it works as advertised, uh, we will close the bets. Okay, that's going to lead to some more questions I'm going to have of you in a minute here. Okay, so let me let me keep reading. So as the bet continues, the pool will just grow and grow as people make more bets. Yes. Okay, I got you. All right. <clears throat> so and that the number here represents the total pool, and then what you win is the ratio between what you, uh, of, the, of the winnings or something, based on how much yeah. you bet? I'm yes. obviously not a gambler, so I don't really understand that much about how it works. But I, I follow. All the details are there under the help tab, right? Yes. Okay, so you wanna get into the analysis. But I'm, I'm having fun reading the statement. So here's another one. Gold will be worth more than $1,900 an ounce at the end of 2011. Okay, it's 24 to 21. Wow, close. What do you say, Ed? He's the gold bug over there. Is, is gold going to be worth more than $1,900 an ounce by the end of the year? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so you want to bet on the yes side. Over <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, okay, the next one is the Mt. Gox price of Bitcoin will be greater than or equal to $10 at midnight January 1st. Wow. I'm staying out of that one. <laughs> I, I was making all kinds of predictions like that, uh, you know, six months ago, nine months ago, and I was right. Uh, on e each of the dollar amounts, pretty much. The one time I did predict it would be $10, remember? It was $9.99 before midnight that day. So I was pretty right on. At this point, though, uh, I'm only connecting the dots on the lows of the price. So it's still up from a year ago. But you have to ignore the, the noise of the speculators. Okay, Bitcoin will be exchanged at a rate of over $30 a Bitcoin at the end of 2011. Wow, that's quite different. 30 Bitcoins to 1.7 says that's not going to happen. The existence of extraterrestrials will be officially confirmed by the U.S. government by the end of 2012. Wow. People are actually betting toward that. Rick Perry so, will be... <laughs> yeah, w one person did. One person <laughs> bet 1.1 Bitcoin. Yeah, he just created the statement and put 1.1 1 .1 on one side. So, <laughs> okay, so these people that are betting against that, if it turns out to not be true, what are they going to win? Oh, they're going to divvy up that 1.1 Bitcoin? Yes, they just... Okay. They're going to split that. the pool of the 1.1 Bitcoin? Yes. Okay. Wow. All right. I know which side mine would be on. All right. So Rick Perry, I mean, <laughs> even if we do discover them, I don't know if they're going to officially confirm it. <laughs> that seems unlikely. Rick Perry will be the next Republican presidential candidate. Okay, Greece will officially debut its debt, or sorry, Greece will officially default on its debts by the end of 2011. Barack Obama will be re-elected as president of the USA. Wow. Ron Paul will be elected president, four to, one, four to two basically, says no. Greece will not be a Euro member on April 1st, 2012. This is fun just to read the questions and then read how people are betting on them. We have more yes. statements to bet on. So these are just the highest ones. And if you do more statements, oh, wow. So you've got available yeah, we have waiting. A lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot. Highest, lowest, earliest deadline, latest deadline, newest, oldest. Oh, my gosh. All right. So the earliest deadline are the ones that are coming right up. By the end of November, Mt. Gox Bitcoin price will be greater than or equal to five dollars 
Oh, nobody's so, betting that that's true. Yeah, for example, yeah, nobody's betting four. Um, mm -hmm. So it, when that happens, we will just refund uh, without taking any commission. Oh, you just refund it without taking a commission. Oh, got yes. you. Yes. All right. So, okay. Now, uh, some more questions. I will have fun all day reading these. Um, to create an account, what do you need? Log in, register. I'm going to go ahead and go there. I just hit account, register. And what do, what do you need? Just an email address? Or not, or not even? To yeah, just an email address. Just and an email address. And that will give you a Bitcoin address to send funds. Okay, so there it asks me my username, email address, password, register, boom, and I'm done. Okay, so yes. that sounds easy. And then when I place a bet, you just it gives me a, a Bitcoin you address to, the, to send the Bitcoin uh, to? page of that statement, mm -hmm. and you fill the uh, box of how much you bet, and you take a site, and that's it. Ah, okay. Okay, so I clicked on this one. Oh, here it is. So it's over here on the right. Uh, place your bet here. Current wait time is all right. So you need to log in to bet. Okay, got you. All right, and it shows you all the details. Total weighted disagree bets. Wow, this is amazing. Okay, so so, yeah. so each statement also has a description of uh, details of how we will decide in uh, various edge cases and. If something uh, that's not exactly stated, uh, mm -hmm. we'll try to use our own best judgment. Mm -hmm. So we are the referee in the end. You're the arbitrator in the end, okay. Yes. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. That was my next question is, you know, if there's something really bizarre, like, is it going to rain uh, in Central Park, you know, on Saturday, um, so how would you determine that? Yeah, so in those kind of statements, we ask the submitter to submit a website, a link, where we can just click on and read it. So they said that weather.com uh, website is the main information, so, mm. or wunderground.com, whatever. Okay. Um, so, so you're not going to take an arbitrary... Specific. You're not going to accept an arbitrary, uh, vague... Thing like that, because it could be raining in the south end of Central Park and sunny in the north end. You want to uh, you want to tie that to say, okay, whatever. New York Weather Radar dot com is going to report that there was rain on Central Park or not. Yes. So you make it much more exactly. clear. Yeah, that that seems more fair <laughs> and easier oh, for you guys to quantify. So do you do you guys your staff there yourself? You have to um, determine whether this happened or not. Yes, we have to determine. So that's a that's an interesting job somebody has. You've got to you got to verify. First of all, you got to verify that each statement that's submitted is verifiable or not. Yes. And then once it happens, you have to go and verify it. Yes. Have you it ever had it? Doesn't really take that much time. <laughs> no, it's you... I guess if you're. Have you ever had a faux pas where you um, you know like have you ever had a dispute or you know, say that we, we're basing it on weather, weathernewjersey.com or something, and by that, a year from now, and then a year later, that site doesn't exist. <laughs> what are you going to do then, you know? Um, there has been one case where we got it wrong, and in that case, we just refund the people. You had to reverse it and refund, yeah. Yeah, well. Uh, Bitcoin's back. So, mm. interesting. So we did one wrong judgment. It was a small bet. Uh, we just refunded it. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But usually, it's pretty easy to judge. Pretty As easy. you can see, the statements. It's, you, most of them are pretty easy to judge. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Interesting. So you can just put almost anything, almost any statement you want in here, as long as it's verifiable, and you have yes. a a link or something, some place that has to report it. That's amazing. Yes, verifiable and appropriate. So we don't, for example, accept bets on health and death of people. Oh, that's good. That was another question I was going to have because I'm, I, I've so, heard yeah, that there are... We get that a lot. Like, what happens to assassination markets? And it's not part of our website. Right. Okay. So you're not betting on the live... Well, you're not betting on a, an assassination of a president, even? 
No, nothing like that. <laughs> nothing to do with the life or health, not even health. Um, no. So like in the case of we went back in time and you know, before Steve Jobs got sick again, you wouldn't accept a bet as to whether his cancer would come back Actually, out of... Actually, that happened. Uh, people submitted that statement uh, and we didn't accept it. You don't accept it. Okay, no. so that's a general policy. The life or death or health or wealth, uh, health or well-being, I guess, health or ill health of a person you don't accept bets on. Are there any yes. other categories of bets that you will not accept? Um, nothing so far. We'll, <laughs> we'll judge as we go. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Wow. Now, can I ask how, how big is your team? How many people do you have that are managing uh, this? We are two people right now. Two people? Yes. And how many bets have been placed so far altogether? Um, all right. Let's go and it's more like around 100, I believe. About 100? Yeah. Okay. Because it's just, you're just like two months old. Okay, I see there's four pages if I look at this category. So, so these are the active ones. They're also closed ones. Oh, right. Like, Available, waiting, closed, all. So, yeah. Okay. So more than, definitely more than 100. I didn't keep track of the numbers. <laughs> okay. Well, are, are you making money? Um, not much. No, it just covers the server costs, basically, because the, we get a very small percentage of just the losing bets. Oh, there's one more thing. We, uh, it's just we also get uh, a submission fee of 0.1 bitcoins uh, when somebody submits a fee, and we refund it if we reject the statement. Oh, that's if they if you submit a a statement, a bet, another yes. bet, but a statement. Yes. There's a submission fee of 0.1 yes. bitcoin. Okay. Yes. Okay. But bets are free. Mm-hmm. I notice a lot of them seem to be political statements, like who's going to win or run. Um, yes, so a lot of, for example, U.S. election statements, um, we think that they will be getting more and more popular next year. Mm -hmm. So people want to put them early on. Mm -hmm. So it has an advantage. So for, first of all, you'll get a commission. Mm -hmm. And second of all, as I said, the early bets win more. So if you bet it now, you have a higher chance of getting more Bitcoins back. Now, what about this, like, um, here's a statement that says there will be rioting in the U.S. before the end of 2011, three weeks out. Now, two questions. One, like, how would you document rioting in the U.S. and define that? It's, it's so, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a weird one. Mm -hmm. um, but we think that we'll just look for several uh, says, newspaper articles that claims it as a riot. For, for example, it, it happened in London. In London, it was pretty clear. Everybody was claiming it as riots, and there right. was the Wikipedia article titled as London Riots, etc. So if something like that happens in the U.S., uh, it will be counted as a riot. So you count, you, it required two or three mainstream media sources to call it a riot. Okay, yes. now it says before the end of 2011. Now here's a question, another one. Okay, before the end of 2011, it seems that three weeks out is kind of arbitrary because that's not the end of 2011. So oh, that's the end of the uh, betting. The betting. Time. So you cannot bet after that. Um, so there are actually two dates. There's the event date and there's the bet deadline date. So mm -hmm. you cannot bet after the bet deadline. Mm -hmm. And we will decide if the statement is true at the event date. Okay. Okay. So that's a perfect tie-in because my question was going to be, what happens... In, like in this case, what happens if there are riots before the betting period even ends? Okay. <laughs> it's going to ruin the so bet. When, when that happens, we stop betting um, and we can cancel bets after it actually at a certain happened. point if that's needed. Oh. For example, if we learn it late that mm -hmm. actually the, the event is concluded, uh, we can cancel it. Uh, at, at a certain point, then all the bets after that will be refunded, mm -hmm. and we will just uh, calculate the returns of the mm -hmm. earlier bets. Okay, so you have to just find the exact date and time and minute that it was reported that riots were happening or whatever, the first report of it, and then roll back any bets that happened from that time forward, so that you only yes. count bets that came in before it was actually happened. Yes. Okay. 
Yes. Or maybe even a day before it was reported, if it, whatever. whatever yes. Whenever the actual event happened, I guess. Huh? Yeah, so we usually set the deadlines at the midnight um, Eastern time. Mm -hmm. It seems that many of our users from our US, so we mm -hmm. chose the um, Eastern time. Wow, okay. And do you ever have, okay, so you do have cases where there's zero bets on a pool on one side, and then you just refund the other. Have you ever had uh, where it's exactly even? But I guess that, what happens when, when it's exactly even, 100 bitcoins on each side? Um, so one side loses and we'll distribute that losing 100 bitcoins to the other guys. So it doesn't mm -hmm. matter, the, the proportions are, doesn't matter when we are mm -hmm. distributing it. It only matters like seeing how people predict, how the crowd predicts the events. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, cool. This is so fascinating. I don't know why I'm so fascinated because I'm, I'm not really I a gambler myself. I mean, even in Vegas, I don't even like to gamble. It's just, you know, whatever. But uh, it's just so fascinating that people can, you can just make a bet on absolutely any statement you want. All right. Well, we, we need to take a break just for so, a moment because we have to thank our sponsors. Um, and anyway, this is just so fascinating because it's Bitcoin. Bitcoin enables this type of creative uh, venture that you just, you know, try setting that up with PayPal. Okay, well, we'll be right back. So uh, <laughs> we want to thank our sponsors um, who bring us the Bitcoin show to you um, uh, regularly, and they are Mt. Gox, which is the world's leader Bitcoin exchange. Uh, if you want to know how to get involved in all this, you've heard about Bitcoin, you've been watching the Bitcoin show, and you're hearing about uh, bets of Bitcoin and all these wild things you can do with Bitcoin, you want to know, how do I buy Bitcoin and how do you use Bitcoin? By the way, the next episode we're going to tape is, uh, is actually going to be a tutorial, how to buy Bitcoin and how to use Bitcoin. And basically, in a nutshell, this is it, Mt. Gox. If you want to get a head start on it, just go to mtgox.com. Obviously, you can buy and sell Bitcoins from people in your neighborhood, anywhere. You know, there are lots of ways to do it locally. But without even leaving your house and doing it online, you can go to Mt. Gox. It's mtgox.com. And... You could create an account for free, and uh, you can s send money to them in various different ways. To me, the easiest way is just to click uh, Add Funds and click International Wire Transfer, and it'll give you a, piece, a, a page that you print and walk into your bank and uh, just do a bank wire transfer to them. And then uh, they're, you're wiring it to them, and their headquarters is in Tokyo. And uh, by, well, if you're in the U.S. Eastern Time, for example, uh, there, you wire it to them on today's banking business, if it's in the middle, you know, say it's a Monday, and then by 9 p.m. that night, the banks will be open in Tokyo, so by the time you wake up the next day, it should be credited in your account, typically. So it's real fast, and then you'll have U.S. dollars in your Mt. Gox account, and then you can follow the instructions to buy Bitcoin, and that's how you buy Bitcoin. And you can actually use Mt. Gox even as an e-wallet. You can keep your Bitcoins there safely. They have two-factor authentication available. There's a thing called a YubiKey, Y-U-B-I-K-E-Y, -E I think it's spelled. And you can click on that and ask them to send you a YubiKey. And that's a little USB dongle, a tiny little thing you put on your keychain and it sticks in your USB port and puts in a special password so that it'll protect you even if your computer was virus ridden. They wouldn't be able to get into your Mt. Gox account. It's brilliant. So um, we highly recommend Mt. Gox. You can buy Bitcoins with more than 16 different currencies now and sell Bitcoin back into those currencies as well. 24 hours, seven days a week, um, vast majority of the market share. There are other online exchanges, but Mt. Gox is the de facto uh, leader by far. And we thank them for supporting the Bitcoin show and bringing us to you. And the new book by New York Times bestselling author Gary Vaynerchuk is called The Thank You Economy. And it is brilliant. Uh, and I'm not just saying that. I've been a fan of Gary's way before we ever thought of him being a sponsor. Um, but his new book is really the Bible on how to use social media, the internet, all these technologies, uh, Twitter, Facebook, and all that stuff, but how to do it right to actually promote your brand and your business. Um, everybody knows that they intuitively know to use social media or that they should be using it but they don't have a clue how. And even those who are using it, I say 99% of them are doing it wrong. This book teaches you how to leverage these new technologies and bring us back to a day like your grandparents' era when they had customer service 
coming from the local store down the street. You know, real personalized customer service. That's what people want. And that's what these new technologies, that's the beauty of these new technologies, of social media, et cetera, um, allow businesses to do. Small, medium, and large. It's scalable. So um, the book is the Bible on this. It tells you how to do it. You've got to read it. You'll see that we, we interviewed uh, Charlie uh, Shrem the other day on the Bitcoin show, and he was, you know, I didn't even know, but he's telling me that, oh my gosh, yes, he loves that book, and it's his, his uh, Bible. So anyway, check it out. You can just go to thankyoeconomybook.com, thankyoeconomybook.com, and read all about it. You can even read an intro on Amazon and all that. Uh, thanks, Gary Vaynerchuk. We really appreciate you. And memorydealers.com. Roger Ver, who you may have seen on previous episodes of the Bitcoin show. Roger Ver is uh, a Bitcoin evangelist. He calls me um, you know, we hung out together when I was in Tokyo, and he calls me uh, the Bitcoin evangelist and things like that. And I, I always tell him, I say, you know, <laughs> Roger, if I am the Bitcoin evangelist, you are like Bitcoin Jesus. And so <laughs> I kept saying that, and the, ter- the, the uh, nickname kind of stuck. So uh, people have been making uh, all kinds of images of a Bitcoin Jesus and calling him that. I think his girlfriend, he's into... Uh, uh, what is it, Jiu-Jitsu, however you say that, and uh, so he's into all these martial arts stuff, and his girlfriend is going to make a, a, one of those Jiu-Jitsu robes with a big Bitcoin emblem on the back, like embroidered on it, and then Bitcoin Jesus, that's what I heard, so we'll see if, uh, if he got that done, but anyway, he is, um, Roger Ver is the founder and owner of MemoryDealers.com, and uh, MemoryDealers.com is the you, you probably heard, first heard about them when you saw the billboard out there in Silicon Valley. And um, it says, we accept Bitcoin, P2P cryptocurrency. All right, that's how I first heard about memory dealers. I didn't know anything about it. But now I do. Um, it's one of the largest retailers, online retailers, uh, to accept Bitcoin in the world. And they, have, uh, they also have one of the largest inventories, or maybe the largest inventory, of optical devices for networking. They have routers, switches, uh, fiber optic, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. And they have Bitcoin mining hardware, uh, as well as all sorts of memory and all sorts of other products. But anyway, check it out. Bitcoin, I'm sorry, <laughs> I think Bitcoin. Memorydealers.com, I think of them one and the same. Memorydealers.com, they obviously accept Bitcoin. You can even buy uh, certain ver- uh, varieties of physical Bitcoins for credit cards, PayPal, cash, whatever, through MemoryDealers.com. So anyway, just check out MemoryDealers.com, and we thank them for sponsoring the Bitcoin show. All right, we're back. CoinJetA, you there? Yes. (laughs) Okay, cool. So um, let's see, what else, what else? So do you you see um, continued growth in the number of bets, the number of uh, visitors, the number of statements that are being proposed here? It does, especially... Uh, the numbers of bitcoins betted are um, raising crazy. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I see. Especially with the um, the Butterfly Labs thing, the Bitforce. They're really yeah, it's, that's it's a started hot and quite heavy a bet. controversy. Yeah. yeah. So one interesting thing is when you have that such a service, um, people start to use it over the internet. Before that, people say that you you know I bet hundred dollars that it, this will not happen. And now we see that at some uh, forums, people say that, oh yeah, like go Put to your money where your mouth is. You can make a bet, and we'll see. <laughs> yeah, you, if you if you really if you're really serious, then go there and make a bet, and I'll go and make another bet, and we'll see. If you that's true, you can actually <laughs> people yeah, in forums and online chat rooms and things can they're all talk and they're like, I bet this is going to happen, and you say, oh, I bet it's not, and then you can say, okay, well, put your bitcoins where your mouth is, eh? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> That's very interesting. Now, what categories? I see you've got um, science, technology, politics, econo- economics, entertainment, sports. Are there, what, is there a certain category that seems to get the highest bets or the most bets? So, economics and politics seems to be very popular. Mm-hmm. Um, economics. Yeah. It's so a lot of it's about Bitcoin too. Of course, it's Bitcoin. I was centric. expecting sports might be popular, but it's not right now. Not yet. Yeah, I'm sure it will be. Once the non geeks, the non Bitcoin geeks, learn about this, you know, Bitcoin is very much about economics and about politics. 
because Bitcoin, right. a lot of Bitcoin people are like liberty minded and, and they're about, also about economics and they're also geeks. And so I understand the technology, the economics and the politics would be very hot, but um, they're not typically sports fans, but, but sports betting is very popular. So uh, I'll bet that will become big once the, the, once people understand, actually once the next episode of the Bitcoin show comes out, when I teach people how to buy and use Bitcoin in like three minutes, I think that a lot more people are going to get into Bitcoin and they're going to see how easy this is to do and how fun it is. Um, yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Now, have you received criticism or complaints from anyone? Um, there are people suggesting different things. They want different stuff. Uh, some people don't like the uh, distribution scheme. They want different kinds of betting. Uh, but overall, I think people are happy. The, our users are happy. We have a couple of hundred of them right now. Mm -hmm. um, and they keep betting. Uh, what is your privacy policy about, um, you know, like if, if somebody gives their email address and their login out and all that, is, uh, how protective of you are, are you of their privacy, their identity? Oh, yeah. Uh, everything is anonymous. So when you go to, for example, uh, the page of a statement, you do not see who submitted it, even a nick. Uh, so who betted on it? We just give the numbers and the dates. That's it. So you just decide on based on that. Okay, so if you're an American and you're in the USA, is this legal? As I said, <laughs> I don't think there is any evidence for or against at this point because of it's based on bitcoins. For example, um, I know that there are pure gambling sites uh, that operate on servers in the US and nothing happens to them. I don't know what's going on. Our, our servers are not in the US. Um, hmm, okay. And then if... Uh, but in general, I think from, from the forums, from the discussions I've seen, people think that uh, for the users of the gambling websites, uh, it's okay. There is currently nothing against them. Uh, mm. Operating, there has been problems with the real money, like, I mean, dollars. Dollars, yeah. Um, but for bitcoins, they just operate, it seems. Nothing happens yet. Okay, so, so there's two kinds of gambling sites. There's ones, or at least, uh, one is uh, for US dollars and all the equivalents, PayPal, MasterCard, Visa, and all that. And the other is Bitcoin, and which is yes. tiny, obviously, compared to that. So the, the gambling with US dollar sites, the government has attacked those sites and tried to shut them down and block their, their, their websites through DNS. And you're saying they've even tried to prosecute the operators of the websites, but they haven't prosecuted the actual users of the website, to your knowledge. Yes, that's what I've okay. seen so far. Okay, and then on the Bitcoin gambling sites, you haven't seen any activity trying to attack anybody yet, if, yes. if there ever will be. Okay, because the question is still kind of hanging out there, it, what is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is not legally a currency, it's not issued by a government or a bank, so is it really money, or is it just, uh, you know, Facebook uh, brownie point widgets or something? You know, I mean, it could be... <laughs> yes, yeah, so you know. there are websites that's allowed uh, with what they call, quote-unquote, play money, yeah. Um, I don't know if they will judge Bitcoin as a play money. Yeah, right. Uh, that's true. I mean, if you could, we have to see. We have to, we have mm -hmm. to see. That, that would be very interesting, I think. Yeah, because you could, I mean, obviously somebody could create a, a gambling website that just uses uh, pretend money that's all for fun, that's not money. Um, and this could be deemed that just as well. They could say, well, Bitcoin is not really money. It's uh, just digital numbers and digits and digits in a, in a you know, commodity form, whatever. So it'll, it's yet to be determined whether they... This is going to be very interesting, by the way. Someday also, it will you know, end up in court somewhere and they'll have to decide, is Bitcoin just virtual commodity, virtual goods, like uh, you know, some kind of a Farmville commodity in a game, or is it actually 
going to be considered money in some form. There, there has been a court like that in France with the empty Glox account, I believe. Um, so there, actually, there has been a bet on it, but we had to close it uh, because the deadline passed and we nobody heard anything back from the court. Oh. Uh, but it seems that there is actually a court going on in France deciding. Yeah. Uh, the transactions between MT Cox account to the banks and their bank account is it legal? Uh, do they have any kind of regulations, etc.? Mm -hmm. So maybe we'll see something from France. Right, but even then, that will only be France, not the U.S. And even yes. if it's France, that doesn't necessarily apply to the rest of Europe. So. Yeah, it's, exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, the, the future is... I mean, it's, it's just starting right now that people yeah. try to understand <laughs> and so, decide. <laughs> the future is yet to uh, be here. All we can yes. do is bet on it. <laughs> right. So, Come on. <laughs> okay. So... Uh, just another, another twist. Um, pre it's also a kind of a prediction market. And predi also... I. From what I see, the prediction markets are kind of a little bit separated from the other gambling sites. For example, um, there is a university-run prediction market in the U.S. Uh, with real money. Uh, and there are internal prediction markets in various government organizations and some companies. So. There's also that side, like it's prediction markets. Prediction markets. What's the difference between a predict? Isn't that the same thing? What we're talking about a prediction market? Uh, prediction markets means a very specific thing. You just buy and sell kind of stocks of events, and it will turn into either zero or one in the end. It's like in trade. So, but when people say prediction markets, they refer the in trade model. Uh, in trade.com model, which is the largest prediction market right now mm -hmm. in the world, real money. Uh, I think it's operating in UK. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we call ourselves is prediction bet. Uh, we don't want to mix up that model. Yeah, I don't understand exactly what's the difference between the betting on statements and a prediction market. So, it's real uh, money that they're betting? You go to prediction market. Um, you, for example, uh, buy a stock at $3, and you know exactly when the event uh, finished, it will either be $10 or $0. These are the only two options that can happen. Mm -hmm. And the price of those stocks fluctuates uh, between those two values. Mm -hmm. and, but the design of those markets um, is... To make a prediction out of the crowd knowledge, so they are not designed to be betting. They are designed to get information out of the crowd. Oh, uh, I see. So you're just—they're just asking people to guess, to predict what they think is going to happen, but they're—they're they're not actually betting for money. No, no, they bet. They bet. They go and buy those uh, stocks, basically, mm. and. But the stocks will turn into money in the end. At a certain date, they will turn into money, and it will be either zero or one amount, but whatever it's set. And you know exactly what you will get. But in, in this traditional old-school kind of betting, you, there are only pools, and pools can grow arbitrarily, and you don't know exactly how much you're going to get in the end. It might be very much higher or lower than you expect at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the difference. Wow. Okay. <laughs> that's amazing. And you say they're operating in the UK or the US or both? Um, I think UK. I think there are s some kind of difficulties getting funds from US to in-trade. I don't know the details. Okay. This is interesting. Well, <clears throat> um, bets of Bitcoin. It's uh, all one word, bets of Bitcoin, and you just put the dot before the I-N, so it's B-E-T-S-O-F-B-I-T-C-O -S dot I-N. Or you can just right. Google it as one word, bets of Bitcoin, and you'll find it. Um, Coin Jedi, we, thank you very much. We have to do this again, and uh, oh, yeah. after it's been a, several more months, and see uh, 
see what the status is. Maybe you'll be very rich by then. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> Do you have any bets on here yourself? Uh, at the beginning, when we opened the site, we just put random bets around so that when just people prime the phone. first coming in, they won't see an empty site. Right, right. But just to we prime don't the do phone. that anymore. We don't need it. Now so. you don't need to. Now you can just rake in the profits <laughs> 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 so after you pay the electric you, bill. You can go and, and look at the closed bets and take like the 5% of the losing bets and you'll see that the number is really small. So Oh, uh, so we can calculate your profit. So yeah, yeah, it's you can calculate it. Like one person can go and look at the closed bets uh -huh. and just add up the losing bets and take the five percent, and they see exactly how much we get. Are you making so that's, enough that's to? That's pretty transparent. Are you making more than enough to cover your costs? Uh, barely, yes. Barely, but, okay, all right. Yeah. Well, so just server <laughs> costs and advertising costs, and so it just runs on itself. And I, I find it as a very interesting hobby. Mm -hmm. uh, I really like to see people putting their money where their mouth is, mm -hmm. and it's yeah. very interesting to see how people predict the future and how confident they are of themselves, etc. So it, it yeah. is interesting for me to see that. I, I like that statement. Put your money where your mouth is. Exactly. Well, thanks yeah. again, Coin Jedi. Uh, stay on the down low and say hi to Satoshi, who's hanging out there with you. And. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my, my partner is Satoshi. Oh, your partner is Satoshi. Cool. Okay, <laughs> that's good to know. I'm going to bet on that. So <laughs> or this website. But thanks for joining us. Let's do this again. And um, until next time. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Have Take care, Coin, join Coin Jedi. And uh, thank you Bye. guys for joining us again. And we will see you next time on the Bitcoin Show. Take yes. care.